This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. calling on the world to adopt a new ambitious target. 90% of people tested, 90% of people with HIV on treatment, and 90% of people on treatment with a suppressed viral load. Implementing these new guidelines could prevent millions of new infections and AIDS-related deaths. How will we get there? By meeting the new UN AIDS 90-90-90 targets. We now have to complete the task to end the era of AIDS, period. Full stop, end the era. The UN AIDS goal of 90-90-90, it's a reasonable goal. It's an admirable goal, but in places like Tijuana and there are many places like Tijuana around the world. They're far away from that goal. And it's not to say that Tijuana has such a huge HIV epidemic that it can't get there. It has a manageable epidemic. It's concentrated in high-risk groups. But Tijuana needs to start looking at what other places are doing that are more serious about getting to that goal. And the first thing they're doing is they're ramping up testing. Uh, we're here providing free confidential HIV testing. Uh, we like to pop up in the community and provide testing because we found that just making testing more visible and available and quite honestly more convenient in the community helps with getting people tested. Identifying early infections is very important for a couple of reasons. Number one, we want to help the patient who's HIV positive get on treatment right away. We also want to help those individuals prevent spreading that virus to other individuals. Someone who's recently infected, so the first year of their HIV infection, is more likely to transmit that infection to somebody new uh, more than any other time during their HIV infection. So finding that person and letting them know that they're HIV infected is probably the best way to reduce the epidemic. Davy is a medical doctor and a researcher at UCSD, and he has done a groundbreaking study to look at the transmission network in San Diego how does the virus so, move around the community here? Interestingly, when we ask people, standard public health measures are when someone's HIV infected, we say, who did you get this from? And about half the time, they're wrong. But um, HIV is a fast moving, evolving uh, pathogen. And every single person who's HIV infected has basically a unique strain. But that unique strain is somewhat related to the strain of the person that they got it from. So if you sequence both viruses, you can tell that they're actually linked. And when you put them in a map, you can tell what the transmission networks are in a local community. And what that told us is that if we intervened on someone who had lots of connections now, we could stop new connections from happening in the future. Here in San Diego, since the border is such an issue with us, we are starting to sample across the border to try to figure out how much of our network is shared across the border and how much of it is actually separate. Our initial work showed that there was quite a bit of separation. Um, but now when we look at some of these subnetworks, 
perhaps even like this one, we can see that they're quite connected, especially among men who have sex with men who also inject drugs. And also clients of female sex workers, we can see those connections go back and forth. We know that uh, the numbers are increasing. Uh, we know that this, this is a critical time for Tijuana to do something about the epidemic. And one of the ways to deal with this is to make HIV testing easy, accessible, and HIV treatment accessible. Testing is just the first part in a whole continuum of care. After you find out you're HIV positive, you then have to be linked to care. You then need a clinician who can prescribe you antiretroviral drugs. You then have to take your drugs every day. And ideally, you're getting your viral level suppressed to the level that it can't be detected in routine blood tests. And there are gaps all along the way, and that's called the treatment cascade. The United States has identified its failures because only about a third of the people in the U.S. who are living with HIV have fully suppressed their virus. And in Tijuana, the early analyses show it may be around 3 or 4 percent of people who are infected are even taking antiretrovirals. Preventing a case can be so cost effective. The same with treatment. If we treat one patient, we know that treatment is prevention. When we treat patients, their viral load drops their likelihood of transmitting is less. So it's a good uh, evidence-based strategy. Linking and engaging patients or people, vulnerable people to HIV care works. Treatment as prevention is just one way to slow the spread of HIV. There are lots of proven prevention interventions that don't involve treatment. And each place has to tailor make its response to its epidemic. In Tijuana, for example, there's a lot of heroin use, which means there's probably a lot of sharing of needles and syringes. So mobile programs go out in part of what's called harm reduction and provide clean, free needles and syringes to people. Now those programs have been cut back because they ran out of funding, but they still exist. Methadone is an opiate substitute that people drink, so they're not using needles and syringes. And in a novel targeted intervention, UCSD has begun working with the Tijuana Police Department. What we found with Proyecto El Cuete uh, and uh, our other studies of sex workers was that policing practices are actually one of the most important risk factors for HIV infection in the city. Generally, the police will see the drug users as criminals, so they will criminalize them, uh, victimize them, and uh, sometimes they will just put them in their police cars and take them to temporary jail for 36 hours even though that the law states that the possession of a minimum amount of drugs in Mexico is decriminalized and that syringe possession is also legal. So that led us to this whole other level of intervention. So instead of focusing on drug users and saying, you're a bad person, you shouldn't share syringes, you're going to get HIV, you're going to pass that on to the whole community and scare all the rest of us and get us all sick, that hasn't been effective as an intervention. So how can we look at this in a different way? Once you start to realize it's police that are scaring people into shooting galleries, taking away their syringes and breaking it. So if it's the police that are the problem, then we need to educate the police. The point or the trick to this was to find a hook that would be something that would be attractive to them that would also actually help protect the, uh, the, the IDU, the injection drug user. And what that was, was protect your own health. You know, you need to protect yourself from needle sticks. In the eyes of the police, they're more afraid of a disease than a bullet. And that's the quote that our director of the police academy uh, gave us. Today we are training the Tijuana Police Department on occupational safety issues. The idea is to minimize the risk of HIV infection among officers in the city. For this, we are training their trainers so they can multiply this material. This material includes three modules. The first module is HIV and blood-related infections. The second is uh, what are like the legal aspects of drug possession in Mexico. And the third is about addiction and substance abuse and how to see it as a public health problem. Allí hay gente, mil gentes, mil quinientas gentes viviendo ahí. Y, este, y desgraciadamente, eh, no todos, pero sí muchos, eh, son adictos a una sustancia, a diferentes tipos de droga. 
Parte de la seguridad pública es también conocer a esta gente, tener esa empatía, o sea, ponernos en su lugar, tratarlos con dignidad y sobre todo el oficial, nosotros como policías, entender que estábamos hablando de una enfermedad, no de un crimen. ignoramos estos tres módulos, pues vamos a estar haciendo malas cosas y no vamos a ser efectivos y vamos a perder tiempo. ¿Por qué? Porque si sabemos qué debemos de hacer, cómo tratarlo, cómo canalizarlo para que se rehabilite esta persona, quitamos un problema más de la ciudad. Gracias por su Gracias. 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 Scaling up these interventions in the low and middle income countries like Mexico. I think the work that we do isn't just focused on Mexico, it's really a laboratory for the world in, in these types of settings to understand what we can do. I think it's possible to end AIDS in Tijuana, but I think we need to take a broader look. I think that Mexico as a whole should see that Tijuana is actually a window for what could be the HIV epidemic for the rest of the country. And if one was to take that view, it shouldn't just be Mexico's responsibility to stop that epidemic, given that we have this shared population across the border. So what I think is needed is a binational response. Sure, it's possible, but it takes an incredibly um, dedicated effort that learns from everywhere around the world that's having success. So we know that if you take antiretroviral drugs and you stay on them and drive your virus down to undetectable levels on standard tests, your likelihood of infecting another person plummets. Not to zero, but really, really low. We also know that if you give people clean needles, that they're likely to use them and they're likely not to spread by sharing needles. That has to be aggressively done. And on top of that, we know that condoms work. Um, we also have shown that if you give people antiretroviral drugs who aren't infected, that that lowers their risk of becoming infected, pre-exposure prophylaxis. How do you put all these pieces together? And then how do you keep people on treatment? Well, first of all, you've got to have really aggressive testing. You've got to do what Davy Smith is doing. Here. You've got to find the acutely infected people, try to break those networks up, get them on treatment. You've got to then help people stay on treatment. You can target those groups and flood them with these services. You can have outreach workers like Susie go to them, make sure they're taking their medication, make sure they're getting tested. We all know what the recipe and the directions are for doing this. And it's not happening aggressively enough in the United States, and it's certainly not happening aggressively enough in Tijuana. I think it's a bit, in a sense, academic whether we, whether we, you know, end AIDS or not. Um, uh, the point is to reduce it dramatically, which is what we know we can do. Ending AIDS also doesn't mean that HIV goes away and back into uh, its little host in nature. It means that you stop every infected person from transmitting. And if you get the transmission rate from one person below one, in other words, if one person doesn't infect another person, you're breaking the back of the epidemic. And as epidemiologists say, you're bending the curve. Can we bend the curve? Can we get down to a point where one person isn't infecting another? Absolutely, the tools exist.